everybody doing? Oh, thank you. Thank you. She knows what she's doing. She's a, prof like she's a professional. Find, like, a this morning. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. No, I have a team. I can't do this, but no, I would have come down and like my chucks and jeans and like we a also all very aggressively so. the girls we have we a group works. chat and yeah. we aggressively text each other what are you doing 30 what outfits a day yeah. 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 so what can you tease about what we can expect from alex and kelly's relationship this year i'm so scared i'm gonna say a spoiler so. no I, I, it's this is all about kind of like taking things one step at a time yeah and not trying to just dive like face first into something that could be like crisis slash emotionally driven because last season towards the end there was so much going on and Kelly got thrown into the mix really fast and really heavy yeah that you know I, I think it almost kind of like could have if it wasn't handled as well as it was like writing producers and whatnot could have just become something that seemed very forced but instead really wanted to find the dynamic and the baseline of a great friendship so that once that kiss happened, you know, it was Alex making that move because she's looking forward to moving forward and wanting to kind of like do it in a way that, you know, since this is only her second time having a relationship really, that, you know, she's not walking in and just kind of wearing her heart in her sleeve just to be kind of like torn apart. And thankfully, she found somebody that is so grounded and so thoughtful and kind and caring that it, it really was something that was based on support. So this season is kind of like, between the two of them, really figuring out how to make the dynamic work amidst very chaotic situations. You know, because it's never safe. It's never just dull. Just, when you, just when you think it is cozy and nice, something happens. It's Always. like that whole thing that, that doctors Always. and nurses say, like, never say, wow, it's really quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the second you that do, is this world. influx yeah. of like, you know, broken and bent yeah. people where you're just kind of like, so it's never going to be easy. It's, it's just finding the balance of how to stay connected, yeah. stay real, yeah. stay honest, yeah. which is very difficult to do in any relationship yeah. so that you can kind of like handle and, when crisis And, and be vulnerable, which in yeah. this world is really hard too. Yeah. yeah. Carla, um, is there any plans to continue the adoption story? Yeah, so yes, that is something that again we're trying to do very delicately and very respectfully because with Maggie leaving and that was really the basis and the grounds of, of what that life decision was, it's still something that is very much in Alex's mind and where where that happened last season where the adoption happened and then it kind of fell through within almost with the same day. Yeah. It's like that's actually that's very realistic. That happens all the time. And so that is something that is still on her radar, but she's definitely like not trying to force anything right away. But the cool part is, is that what we've kind of come to find out is that these two are very like-minded. And so that being the case, it doesn't have to be something that you're rushing into. When you're looking at the, the end goal in mind, it's not like, you know, if it's ever gonna happen, it's just how and when and what is that gonna look like. So, Everything's a slow burn with yeah. Kelly and Alex. It's I think like, na naturally nice. they're, they're both very nurturing and caring yeah. and ferociously loving people. So that will definitely be a natural progression. It's just figuring out how to do it tastefully. Yeah. Um, and so that fans can appreciate and, and feel good about that progression as well. Can we get a little more of a backstory on Kelly? I got a pull up. We will. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She has a new job this year. It's awesome. Yes, and it's why I'll, I'll just answer. Kelly okay, has, has a new job this year at uh, Obsidian Tech, which is like this cool sci-fi, very world, advanced, advanced world. The set is like the coolest thing I've ever seen. And the new character Andrea Rojas that's coming in, she'll be working with her. And um, they, they said on notes that I could say that this this dynamic and this company is going to put Kelly in in some serious danger. Um, you know, Kelly's so sweet and pure and thinks she's doing good, um, and she gets in some complicated situations. But the, that whole storyline is so cool. It's very like Black Mirror, weird future. It's everyone that comes to my everyone that comes to my office is like, oh my okay, hi guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day. Have fun. Hello.
Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hey Good guys. morning. So with Leviathan coming, what can you tell, because given he's based, that they're based on technology, what is a really brainy interaction with that? Do you kind of get points that, I guess? Yeah. It's funny, you know, like last year, I, I feel like so much, people just pick Brainy's brain and then then all of a sudden they have this new technology, like last year with meeting with the image inducer, you know? They used Brainy's technology for that, and, uh, and then they made billions of dollars off of him, and so, yeah, you know, uh, this year there is a, a new um, company called Obsidian. Am I allowed to say any of this? I, don't I think know. so, yeah. Yeah, and uh, basically they have this I'll new type of vir <laughs> virtual reality technology, and, uh, and who knows, Brainy might factor into this with Lena, and they might have something in this episode to work. I don't know. I don't, I don't really know. I don't know. I have no idea. How does John get getting to John um, is really dealing with his uh, some seri pretty serious fami uh, family issues um, in, in, in the return of his uh, rather, rather capable brother in Malik. So I'll be kind of having my hands full dealing with some deep family issues. And, it, and so far, so good. I mean, the way that um, they've been writing him is, is, is extremely creative. Um, and I think it's going to give, because um, he's a shapeshifter, I think it's going to give some of the cast great opportunities to play parts of themselves that they haven't, haven't done yet. So already it looks great. And it's going to be uh, a great opportunity for us to just work together in a slightly different way. And that's always a fun thing to do on our show when, like, when when Kara yeah. plays you playing yeah. her, and when Sam Witwer played, when I when he played me playing him, it, that's always fun Extremely to hand off fun. characters like that. Yeah. So. David, one of the coolest parts, uh, one of the coolest parts this last season was really seeing the relationship between John and, and Manchester Black, yeah. and sort of the frenemies dynamic yeah. between them. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about um, about about that relationship um, and, and, and John's struggle against violence, sort of represented in that relationship. Yeah, I, I guess it was the wrong time to meet Manchester because <laughs> uh, he's a lot of fun, and um, uh, but, but quite dark. And I think he was kind of challenging to challenge him, John, to sort of let loose, be, you know, be yourself and come and join me on this kind of rampaging, avenging sort of uh, uh, mission. Um, very seductive, and I think the character was very seductive, but you know, at, at, at heart, I think John's a, John is a, 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 he's a law enforcement officer, so at the end of the day, it comes down to you know, right and wrong, and I think um, uh, he chose, even though it was very seductive, I think he chose the path of justice, and um, unfortunately Manchester had to be ended. Um, I say unfortunately because he's such a great character, and I, I was hoping that, I think in the comic books he does have superhero, his, uh, superpowers, and I was really hoping that uh, he did have superpowers, because I couldn't punch him. <laughs> um, I, couldn't, I could never fight him, because it was, it was kind of super, uh, superhero versus non superhero uh, and I think the crowd the fans really wanted that kind of coming together um, and I think as a result unfortunately it just slightly just went away but um, it was a little unresolved but I met him in the lift this morning so it was kind of nice to, <laughs> to see him again so uh, hopefully throughout the day we can talk about it. Would you guys say that this season is more comic book heavy or are we kind of going to go back off the beaten path and create some new stories? I mean, from what I've heard about what's going to happen in the crossover, it's like going to be a comic book fan's, you know, dream come true. Yeah. Uh, so, but you know, I think there's a healthy balance between, you know, paying homage to stuff from the comics and, you know, finding our own path in the show. Mm. So Brainy told me last season that he loved her. What can you tease about that relationship this season? Um, well, in, at least in these first couple episodes, we will, uh, we will see them together uh, in a relationship. And learn how the kind of after the aftermath of, of the alignment situation, uh, like how that affected them as a couple, and and what that revealed about Brainy, about who he is, um, uh, you know, and about what he knows about himself, and how he'll struggle with opening up with Nia and being vulnerable with her, uh, because you know he did hurt her unintentionally, uh, and so. And so yeah, it's going to be a struggle, um, but there will be fun moments, and, and yeah, it's in, in these first couple episodes, you're definitely going to see a lot of Brainy and Nia moments together, 
and uh, yeah, fun. Quite quickly. Outside. All right. Um, how was it directing um, Supergirl, and would you do it again? I'm doing uh, another another episode this year. I'm doing Five Eleven this year. Fantastic, great experience to direct. It's a fantastic crew, great cast. So I couldn't have asked for a better place to start my directorial journey. So really, really great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So sad about the news about you leaving. It's yeah. What's it up is. with that? I don't know. What's your reaction? And uh, are you gonna miss the show really bad? Like, yeah, what are you gonna miss man. About? I'm gonna I, I'm I'm gonna miss it. I knew I was gonna miss it pretty badly, but um, it's actually now that this impending deadline is coming, it's 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 even harder than I thought. So like you know, these these people are my family, uh, and I've never I said over here. I've never been on a set before where I've seen actors and crew and writers get along so well. We, we, we have our things, but we, we, we are still on group texts that we've been on since the pilot. We go to dinner together. Like, that's, that's abnormal after years and years and years. And so, like, this is my family, and it's tough. It's really tough, but, it's, you know, I, I, I have some other things I, I gotta do, and I gotta move on. And it, it's really harmonious, and I, I'm really happy that, that it's, it's such a gracious exit. And, and we all love each other, so it's great. Can you tell us anything about what you're doing next? Yeah, I'm, I'm developing a cable series for me to star in. I have a group of friends who um, have a very unique perspective on life. We've all kind of been through the ringer. Um, I, I passed away, came back, and I've been in a coma. I have other friends like that, and we've all had post-traumatic growth. And I'm, I'm really excited to, to sort of explore that, that kind of world with those kind of characters on television because it's never been done. Nice. And um, yeah, that's going to be fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. My favorite movie, Nicole, is because um, it's, it was one of the best episodes of the season was when we went back to Nia's hometown, saw her family, and there's this, there's still that unresolved conflict between her and her sister. Do you think we're going to. Are we going to touch on that again, or are you, is she just staying away from that because... It's absolutely in the talks. We absolutely really want um, Hannah James to come back. That's absolutely... That's not the kind of thing that we want to leave up in the air, because it's absolutely something that happens. You know, sisters fight, that kind of... It's And it, I think the important thing to recognize about that conflict is it wasn't coming from a place of transphobia, it was coming from a place of two sisters fighting. And when you fight with your sibling, you can go for the jugular. And so I think yeah. it's really important. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and so I think it's really important to show that resolution and show the growth that comes from that. Um, and so I'm really hoping um, that I get to see her come back soon. The problem is she's just so crazy. <laughs> She's always doing something, and I'm like, I'm like, Hannah, come back. I need yeah, you. Hannah, be worse, <laughs> so we can have you back. So, no. yeah. <laughs> well, do less, Hannah. Do less, Hannah. No, I love her so much. Um, so I'm, so it's absolutely in the talks, um, and I really want to see that come back, so they can grow from the relationship, and hopefully Nia can finally get some help interpreting her dreams. <laughs> she has no idea what's going on. I haven't seen the full extent of hours. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Oh, yeah, no, she has, oh, she's just, it's just, keeps going up. So what can we expect to see with her uh, journey this season? She was, like, coming into the coming dreamer. What can we expect yeah. to see? So, so far, um, her storyline has kind of been balancing work and balancing being a hero, and then also trying to find her footing in this new relationship with Brainiac. They're both so different and so unused to anything like this. And both of them aren't the best at like communicating. So it's kind of trying to find that balance and trying to figure out how to um, express themselves with one another. Uh, back to you leaving the show, I did read somewhere that it might not necessarily have to be a final goodbye, like never say never. Is there any right. way you could maybe pop back in again? To quote Justin Bieber, never say never. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a, lot, a great philosopher. Um, yeah, he, he we, we, we wanted to, to make it a very gracious exit, and so the, the, the door is open to come back, and I'd love to. Um, uh, for some special occasions, and we, like I said, the relationship is is, is, is still loving, it's still intact. It's, we're, we're, we came to this decision together, 
and um, we also came to the decision that we're going to do it in such a way where he can come back whenever and um, that door's open. So, yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate it. Oh, I've just been complimenting everyone's outfits. Chris Thank like, you. The game today. We, I certainly appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it. Stressful. <laughs> so when putting together the season, you decided to go with uh, a bill, uh, you know, an organization Billum that is more based on technology. Where, where did that come from? Like, did you guys look at different options? What, what were you going to do? And what, what was the decision that well, you the technology? Ro Robert and I love telling stories that reflect what's going on in the real world and topics that we feel everyone can identify with. And so technology was one of the first issues that came up for all of us because we're all addicted to our advice, to our devices. We're all, it's just rapidly changed the way we live our lives in recent years. And so that was something that we all found really compelling to explore. It's kind of cool because it's kind of a little bit of a Black Mirror vibe. Like, yes. did you guys think about that when coming up with some of these stories or were inspired by we that? We did, yes. It was a big inspiration for us. Uh, with the 100 episodes, Anything, any returns, you know? no, uh, I think the only thing we can tease is that it's coming yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're planning something special uh, and we're excited about that for beyond as we can. So last season Lena learned that Kara is super goal, what can you tease about how Lena's going to be dealing with that and how that affects their dynamic? Their friendship, whether or not their friendship can recover from that is going to be a central storyline throughout the season. Um, it's going to be really emotional and we're all, I think, really invested in their friendship. So um, it's, it's, it's going to be a, a, a big central theme. Something I kind of took away from the finale is not just for Lena but also a little bit for Eve is that they're both going to be dealing with find their own light and darkness in some ways. Can you yes. talk a little about that? Because I don't see Eve as necessarily wanting to be part of Leviathan anymore. Yes. Well, I mean, I think she's uh, in a bit of trouble from Leviathan at the end of last season, and that's something she's going to have to deal with. Um, and, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, Lena is on her own path this season because of the, you know, the fallout from the betrayal. So. What, can, well, what can you tease us about Supergirl's involvement with the Crisis on Infinite Earths uh, crossover? Uh, not much. Uh, uh, you know, once again, uh, we're top excited. Oh. It's top secret, but we're excited about it. Oh. How difficult are those crossovers for you? I mean, I enjoy watching them, but is it like five times as much work, or how? It's I mean, it's a lot of work because we do it. Uh, you know, it's a big undertaking, and the logistics are tough, and we're scheduling a, you know, more than just our show. But you know, it's important for all of us. Are uh, so excited to be able to do them every year for the fans, and uh, you know, we want to make them bigger and better, and make sure that we do them right. So it uh, takes time and effort to do it, but we're, it's always worth it in the end. How excited are you to get to ride? I mean, car is actually with two Supermans. We got Tyler and Brandon. So cool. We're all excited about that they're we'll have two Supermans. Thank you, guys. Thank you.